All right, so welcome to BIC's India Market Review for 27th March. Another few days to left left for this financial year to get over, and then another new financial year starts. So I hope the last financial year has been a good one with all the rallies that uh, we had. So I'm sure it will end out on a very profitable note for quite a lot of people who have just been you know buy and hold for the last year. So we know what happened and uh, I think maybe next week uh, we'll just do a review of how the year went uh, uh, since expiry just got over we'll focus on the short term now and next week just remind me maybe we'll just do a longer term one year review of how the market was and maybe how the market could be in the coming financial year but just to sound out on that I, I think the coming financial year is probably not going to be as lucrative and as uh, uh, bullish or you know unidirectional as the last year has been it will probably be more choppy um, most of the uh, I think uh, sentiment driven stuff has been factored in more the government uh, economic recovery and all things like that but the new challenges on the global front are and the local ones in terms of government implementing programs passing appropriate policy uh, is one local challenge we're going to have and the other one is the global factors that are definitely going to play and it's definitely not getting any less uh, complex uh, one of the things we have is for example uh, I don't know how many of you saw today's news which is that uh, Brazil okay grew GDP grew uh, 0 0.1 percent that's the official rate that came out today that's just you know it could be statistical manipulation also and the reason I bring this up is uh, well all of us have heard of BRICS B for BRICS and uh, I is a very strong part of BRICS so if Brazil is growing just by 0 percent China has slowed down as we already know from the official seven and a half to slightly less than seven percent um, Indonesia has very high inflation because uh, they have been resetting uh, uh, their fuel subsidies uh, so and then there's South Africa where you've got very 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 bad power shortages so even in the major cities you've got uh, uh, six seven eight hours of power cuts every day even for the affluent uh, the other thing is uh, the Greek problem is not over and we still have uh, you know deflation in the, the threat of deflation in uh, uh, Europe US is the only bright spot but can it pull the whole world out of uh, the mess uh, that's that's a moot point so that's that's the quick summary of uh, the global scenario so essentially I think the coming year is not going to be as uh, uh, as happy trending uh, non volatile as the last year has been so it's going to become even a bigger challenge to be stock specific, sector specific, uh, find the right stories uh, and I suspect that's how it might be for the next two three years. Um, so I think the challenges are just going to get tougher. Right? So just sounding that out. Alright, so what has happened this month, uh, this week, uh, if anybody has any other important uh, financial or political or any other news uh, um, just put it out I haven't been seeing the papers too much uh, so Yemen yeah has become a flashpoint uh, did the Saudis go and bomb the place yes. right okay so yes. Yemen has become a flashpoint and uh, Yemen is going to be a proxy Saudi Iran war right so this is another threat that is uh, uh, gradually going to increase um, so any other factors by the way I'm, go I'm just going to unmute everybody and can you just manage the mic at your end so if you're not speaking then please put yourself on mute so that we don't get your background noise all right yeah so I'm just going to unmute everyone and you mute when you're not speaking so if you want to speak unmute speak and then mute again right thank you all right so anybody else with uh, any other events uh, yeah Bobby I was just wondering if the, the weather 
because there are a lot of uh, news about uh, uh, Sonia Gandhi going and visiting farmers because a lot of crop has been damaged because of I think unseasonal weather or some well, bad rains or something. I think I don't know if the media is making a big thing out of this because the unseasonal weather has been there around for I think almost a, wet, a month now. Uh, I think if you remember the rains we had a uh, few weeks back, you're completely unseasonal. Um, I think uh, the temperature for this time in Bangalore in March, it's already 38. The Met Office is saying we we'll probably not do 40, but this is, you know, April, May weather that we're having in Bangalore for the last uh, at least one week, if not two weeks. So unseasonal weather is here. Uh, I'm not sure that's a new thing, uh, but uh, in terms of crops, uh, yeah, go ahead. There was some, I mean, there was news about crop damage, and as they basically my thinking was anything that could affect food inflation, because that there are different factors. But I just I'm just throwing it out. No, it is a factor. There is absolutely no doubt about that, and uh, it's something to watch out for. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Uh, the other. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, that's it. I think I said. Okay. So. Uh, I think all of us got the WhatsApp message about uh, did you get changes in the index? So quite a few stocks being moved from uh, the top indices, the Nifty, the Nifty Junior and the um, CNX 100 also. Uh, is everyone aware of this? Let me just see if, uh, where is that? Huh? I put that in the BIC group. Oh, you put it, yeah. I was wondering. Today. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, we got it, huh? Yeah. I got it in the WhatsApp. Okay, great. So, the Nifty, DLF, and JSPL, Jindal Steel, and Power Grating Out, IDIS yes, Bank from uh, Nifty Junior coming in. So, um, apart from uh, talking about DLF, we've got uh, the CAG report on Vadra. And whether there's going to be what are implications of that on DLF is uh, something you can look out for and whether this is going to become a even stronger political anti-Gandhi family sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe too strong to call it a witch hunt right now, but still. So these are the news and events I can think of. Anyone wants to add anything? No? All right. All right. So... We'll go ahead. Okay, so you can see the Nifty on your screen, and uh, what you can see very nicely today is uh, so. First of all, uh, you know this is uh, where the Nifty was last time. Uh, I had broken the support line, and we were talking about uh, 8200 as a possibility, 8250, and what I'd mentioned last time was based on the option pain. Uh, data that oh yeah so today Vidya has joined us so great to have you on the session Vidya so you they all saw the option pane diagram that you created so thank you so much for that uh, so I, if you remember the discussion was probably the market might just remain at 85 maybe even 8600 and then uh, you know move down further after that uh, well it's caught us by surprise uh, a little bit sort of because the move down happened faster than uh, but at least what I had anticipated and on Thursday itself we you know uh, did the 180 point down thing 2% down and today we seem to have formed a, uh, maybe a tentative uh, hammer a too early to say in my opinion um, and that's happened at a nice support which had already been marked out uh, so this is at uh, 8250 Bobby's asking is there a falling wedge uh, a falling wedge is important if there is a downtrend. So I would not put this as a falling wedge. All right. Uh, so it's uh, if if there was a sort of wedge, if I might say that, then there was this right from February March last year. You can see the return line and the trend line, you know, converging. And once the trend line broke, um, we know what happened. So the, the importance of this uh, zone here where the cursor is, is that uh, you had two trend lines, the yellow one and the sort of light pink one, plus the support line here of 8,600, which all sort of broke within a week. And once that happened, then that was definitely significant. 
right? And uh, <coughs> you can see that uh, those of us who follow indicators, um, initially the down moves seem to have happened with lower volumes, but then of course this is expiry volume, so a little difficult to read, but the volume seemed to have picked up on the downside. Plus, uh, uh, there's absolutely no strength in any of the indicators according to me. So I think this is uh, uh, not the end. So today's question, those of you saw on the Yahoo post was, uh, you know, how far down are we headed? So as, as of now, we've come to an important support of 8200 and we have this 200 day moving average at 8100. I sort of really fully expect this to break and I think, uh, so 8100 will be the next critical level to watch. Of course, there's this whole bunch of supports here. But if 8100 breaks, then I think we are looking easily at 7700, uh, which could happen uh, this, this expiry for you, for sure. Uh, again, in terms of triggers, remember that probably the only other trigger now we have is, uh, I would say at least two weeks away, which are the corporate annual results. And I don't think anybody, at least I'm not expecting anything you know, outstanding in that. You can see this, I've switched to a weekly chart. And you can see that we have a sort of strong Marubozu almost type chart on weekly candles of the Nifty uh, indicating uh, uh, quite a lot of weakness. And on the week, uh, weekly indicators, uh, the strength, uh, sorry, the, the weakness uh, continues. And let me draw your attention to this one indicator here, which is the RSI. And that is at 54 for... Uh, the last several uh, so that acted as a sort of support level you know support resistance level so just drawing your attention to this level uh, so you can see how that is not 50 actually it's at 54 so it's not at the equilibrium point and how that has now been broken after almost uh, one and a half years and uh, that's uh, not a good sign uh, so I think downside um, potential for uh, sorry let me go back to weekly uh, for uh, the nifty is definitely stronger than any upside potential that is there okay uh, yeah so so 7700 uh, multi-week call uh, the only rescue can be something definitely uh, you know amazing happens with the annual results which uh, I don't expect at this point all right, so that's the Nifty. So let's look at uh, the sectors. So this is the Bank Nifty, and uh, the Bank Nifty once it broke this level of around eighteen thousand six hundred, uh, you know, just broke down and on Thursday even gapped down. You can see here, you know, that the very deceptive dojis or spinning tops that you tend to get in downtrends which uh, the amateurs or people in the beginning start to think of as a support but inevitably just a matter of time that the fall happens good lesson to learn uh, so uh, one of the participants in the last FNO class so he was tracking this and he saw how I think the 18,300 put option on the nifty went from uh, uh, no, 18.6 put option, I think, went from 50 rupees to 500 rupees in about two days. And he was like, wow. And I was wondering why he didn't trade and all. But still, just to you know, give you a sense of what happened. And coming back to indicators, again, really, I don't think there's much strength. Uh, there is a, a hammer today, definitely, at a nice support of 17,700, which I really doubt will hold. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, downtrend here right. the unless uh, you know Raghuram comes out with some another surprise interest rate cut which I wouldn't expect uh, he's done too already so we are in a support zone as, as of now I would say that any bounce up should be used for shorting and uh, the next support is at 17,100 on the uh, bank nifty uh, but coming to back to one of my uh, themes that I I think will become stronger in the days and weeks ahead is the test of previous life highs so the bank nifty previous life high is 16,200 so those of us who 
who you know depending on your level of conviction and what your views are this is another bear spread uh, that you know you could look at uh, in the bank nifty which is uh, uh, sell the 18000 uh, uh, sorry buy the 18000 put on the bank nifty of course now we are in april and sell somewhere lower at maybe 17000 uh, so that gives you about a thousand point uh, uh, spread uh, or if things get worse then you could initiate another one by selling the say 17,200 put uh, or rather sorry buying the 17,200 put and selling the 16,200 put and you could do a ratio spread here which means you could sell two three of these and uh, you know uh, get a better risk reward not a better risk reward a better uh, payoff uh, profile so think about this right so bear spreads on BNF and nifty with the view that uh, we've discussed so BNF expectation is 17.2 and then uh, 16.2 Right, and nifty is eight one zero zero, and then uh, seven seven zero zero. All right, those of you who want to short with the futures, go long on futures as appropriate. Very nice, I think, stop loss on bank nifty futures at around eighteen thousand three fifty. And just to go back to S&P Nifty, uh, okay, might be a little dicey. I would, I think you'll get a decent. Uh, this is going to be a little dicey. Eight thousand five hundred plus would be a good uh, stop loss, right? Uh, Okay, done. So that's the view on the Nifty and the Bank Nifty. So moving on, BSC Power. Again, uh, okay, hold on, interesting. No, not really. I was wondering whether there is some indicator strength nope so VAC power has come back to its 200 day moving average after about five six seven weeks uh, you can see that it did, did a breach of that intraday made a recovery but I wouldn't attribute uh, much to that recovery at all again I think it's clearly a case of uh, short any rise okay uh, so yeah so short any rise and I think the next level for uh, BSC power could be up oh, so see how it's come to sort of horizontal support there uh, yeah next level is at 2225 and I think uh, clearly after that it will be 1950 all right so that's where the uh, levels for BSC power are BSC reality again come to a nice support bounced off just almost from there at 1600 but I think again it's just a question of selling on so Monday is going to be really interesting looks like okay Get a chat, right? So we've got all these lower shadows. Uh, so 1600 here. I think reality can be expected to come down to at least uh, 15. Yeah, around 1475, 1500. Yep. Then CNX IT. So that was one 
place of strength a few weeks back and this has also turned down of course uh, the flip side is that there's been some uh, okay so even though we have got a green candle here today the thing is you've got an upper shadow which means that the you know the bears uh, won the party at the end of the day and as you can see absolutely no strength on the indicators at all so I guess we may not guess uh, the expectation should only be on the lower side and I don't see any support for CNXIT till it comes to about 14, 000, 11,450 and then after that at 11,100 so that's a 5% correction on the CNXIT that we are talking about so mid cap seems to form a rounding top if you can visualize it right so if you can see going around there today seems to just have been a day of support but again uh, wouldn't buy into it if the junior almost did a picture like your uh, CNXIT so energy is completely broken down 8000 possibly broken and then if that goes then uh, 7600 so we're talking about 500 points easily down on uh, energy and then uh, infra so it's come to see that trend line uh, that I think we put a few weeks back it's just come and sat there there's a 200 day moving average also just below that uh, so well potential to take support but again way too premature pharma holding out uh, still showing some strength um, can't help but rem uh, recount how IT held some strength uh, till about three weeks back and then you know turned down so pharma probably in a similar state uh, well we've clearly got divergences on the RSI MAC has done a negative crossover so that is definitely something to watch out for Right. Yeah. So net bearish divergence on pharma. PSU Bank. Well, that was one of our weakest sectors. Uh, broke this level. Took support around there. Right. That's a sort of support zone. Uh, but again, any bounce, I think, uh, should be used to short or exit longs. okay uh, so the VIX has gone up and this is to be expected in uh, down moves volatility does tend to increase as uh, markets uh, you know head down so that is uh, mm, that's, that's natural so by the way the VIX I don't know how many of us because it's not been in the news much uh, know that the VIX can is a traded index volatility so if you were long on the wicks on the way down, you could have uh, made money. So not please get that statement long on the wicks, not short on the wicks, right? So because the volatility goes up. So CNX Auto, and that's well there. Uh, nice double bottom as you can see, uh, but uh, again, not something you want to be uh, buying into. And you can see how the MSCD has opened up indicating even more weakness down the road okay so consumer durables holding out that's interesting going sideways it's I think just a matter of time that uh, they'll also go down capital goods hmm, this is interesting at a important trend line but most of the week is just a question of I think time before uh, these also perhaps slow down where trajectories and, uh,
so we have that down move happening again MACD moving up there is a uh, on the short term a stochastic showing strength but this is in my setting a very short term stochastic so maybe you get a day or two of a bounce but uh, after that it should probably run down and once it's below 16,500 uh, you probably see this go down a lot more to 15,500 on the capital goods side well FMCG decisively broken down we knew that last week itself and today well this is not showing any lower shadow which is meaningful uh, matter of fact, broken the 200-day moving average. Surprising that uh, how one of you know just just is a, this is a good example of observing how sectors change strength and you know get into a weak mode. This was definitely the strongest, uh, one of the strongest apart from IT and pharma for the last many many months, and now is perhaps the weakest given the way it's fallen today and uh, how it's breaking the 200-day moving average and how it is not having any lower shadow today right so these are things to keep in mind and observe how uh, trends change how uh, views change and how one should actually take appropriate action in uh, managing the positions you can see that we are at a nice support okay uh, as a matter of fact just sitting on it and can fully expect the support to perhaps uh, break in the next uh, 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 what in the coming few weeks if not uh, I think maybe probably next week itself right? uh, definitely amongst the stronger uh, spaces to go short on healthcare okay BSC metals ha ah. so again just showing some strength there but it's basically close to its 2008 lows now I think uh, oh, sorry no quite a sorry take that back uh, quite a long way from that and uh, really no no strength even though we've got a green candle it's a it's a filled green not a very good sign some strength showing up on RSI but uh, premature so can avoid buying avoid shorting but don't buy either Okay, so that's it. So I, there's not a single uh, uh, sector which uh, is showing any strength at all, and that's well, definitely not good news. Okay, not a single strength. Uh, Short any bounce. Easy five to eight percent downside on uh, all sectors, or on most sectors. And the reason I say easy is because uh, uh, you know the support levels that. Uh, the ones we mentioned are easily five to eight percent below uh, where the market is right now. So till that support gets hit, I don't think there is any um, um, there's any chance of the market really, uh, uh, but taking any support. So. Across the board, I think it is um, look at closing your longs, uh, closing your DMAT or liquidating your long positions, including your DMAT accounts. Uh, if the evidence is, was not enough last week, then I think uh, the evidence now should be quite evident. And you can probably get into all the, sec all the positions you have at this point at lower prices in a few weeks. Uh, and just coming back to Bobby's set of stocks, all his defense stocks and chemical stocks. Well, I think you are on to some really good stories there. And what I would definitely suggest is to, uh, you know, make a list in the next few weeks of stocks that you could probably get at uh, significantly uh, lower levels than they are uh, at this point from a long-term investment perspective. Right? Okay, so that's my view. Are there any questions? Uh -huh.
Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think maybe uh, I was just thinking when you uh, the probably we'll have uh, the insurance stocks and the defense sector, no? Because mm -hmm. I think insurance also, after that bill was passed, I was wondering how it was, I mean, maybe you can take a look at a few years later. Because uh, I think whichever stocks don't go down in price too much over the next, till till that 77, 75, 77, you know, around that time, <clears throat> you'll see that uh, I think those will be, uh, it'll be a good way of gauging which are the strong, which are which have buying interests? Yeah, saying. sure. Well, see, as far as the insurance thing goes, um, the bill has been passed, and that uh, might encourage some of the insurance companies to do IPOs in the coming few months or next financial year. But I think it's way too early to anticipate any of that, uh, simply because uh, um, um, what? the market conditions are not going to be as lucrative as they were just a few weeks back and the promoters of these companies will probably wait for a better market valuation in order to you know raise uh, money through the IPO right so it, it's good in the long term but I don't see anything happening in terms of market activity in the short term any other views all right fine um, so since this is basically, I think, a market to short uh, very clearly, uh, don't really have much choice except your Nifty Nifty Junior stocks to look at, uh, you know, going short on. So, what do we want to do? Should we do the Nifty or the Nifty Junior stocks today? All right, so this is a small cap index sum. So you can see, you know, last week the big fall, the breakdown. So classic uh, do theory, right? So trend line, trend line breakdown here, uh, an attempt to recover. So let me actually, this is a very good example of how uh, trend line becomes a resistance line. How when the market recovers, you get resistance, and then you know later on that resistance once that is tested and you can see that with that uh, upper shadow there it starts to turn down and you know it's gone so from about 11,000 we are 10,300 that's almost 6% and not a single day of green um, so the small caps just uh, absolutely no strength in them all the uh, so again good lesson in what Dothi talks about you know waiting for confirmation the ascending triangle did not bear fruit. As a matter of fact, you probably now have a downside measuring implication on this. Uh, at least conservatively, I would go from 11,500 to uh, 10,400. So that's uh, 1,100 points down. So, well, I would say we are at this 200 day moving average already broken. I, I, I think quite sure that the mid cap is going to 9,700 sorry the small cap index right so that's another 700 points down that's a cool seven percent six to seven percent down on the small cap side yeah Bobby all right cool okay so let's uh, jump into our nifty stocks so going by alphabetical order as usual so we can see here ACC and again to demonstrate the importance of bounces and resistances you can see here the 1600 uh, mark where uh, not only this week but even last week the market to, took support here went up and then 1600 could not be breached more and more of those moving averages came down and finally today it just went in the direction of the you know, market it just one one big day of uh, Marubozu and looks like in my opinion so very small volume very interesting but remember that uh, stocks can fall on their own weight I think that's going to be a recurring theme this uh, IMR and uh, once this breaks of 1550 which I think is a very strong uh, uh, possibility then we are looking at 1500 1475 as the next target, I would say short ACC with a stop loss at around 1570 and patiently wait for 1514. 
75 right i think from a risk reward perspective is a pretty nice one you could also do a bear spread here or you could just go and buy the 1550 put uh, will be a little expensive today after the fall uh, but look at it on any bounce and buy the 15 1550 put or the 1500 put and hold on to it for who knows maybe till expiry ambuja cement no oh, interesting uh, not showing the bearishness that the acc showed so that's definitely a different behavior but again really nothing to be very optimistic about there is support at 245 that's the 100 day exponential moving average and right now i would say that uh, that is a very good resistance at around 255 you could short this with a very very good stop loss at around 258 that's about 8 rupees up we'll have to be patient in for it to break 245 but once that 245 breaks then 235 and 230 are very easy targets ultra tech so uh, now well please notice one thing in ultra tech so this thick blue line was a former life high which has been broken right so 2813 the stock is now at 2801 broke down these two days today was an attempt to rally back and that has now become a resistance right uh definitely maybe a little bit of strength there but i wouldn't uh, you know be in too much of a hurry to jump into this you could short ultra tech with a very good stop loss at around 2870 and first target at 2650 and then at 2600 Asian paints. Uh, so as you can notice, broke the uptrend line. One of those that was showing some amount of strength after a sideways move. Uh, three waves here. One, two, three, and then finally the breakdown. this is a trend line which is from last june so almost 8 9 months and interestingly it has broken down clearly with higher volumes right so going down on higher volumes further downside on asian paints can be expected and since this is just a recent breakdown compared to all the other sectors we saw earlier uh, you could expect this to even fall to 700 and an excellent stop loss of around 814 i want to put asian paints here as uh, good shorts you know, all the others not that they were not good but uh, i think uh, right and the reason i'm saying this is a good shot is for the falling one is just a very recent breakdown that means just happened yesterday and today the follow through happened and it's happened on high volumes and the uh, 200 day moving average or the next support is you know quite substantially away almost 10% away so we can look at 710 or 700 as the next support on asian paints then let's get to axis bank move down good support you're getting a hammer good volume so that's a lot of churning happening uh, some people definitely buying but uh, there's really no positive news i think as far as fiscal policy anymore is concerned and one should probably expect 500 again please note that this is a strong support from the past which has been broken right and uh, that acted as a resistance today so again you've got a very nice uh, um uh, stop loss probably 563 and once 530 goes then 500 is definitely coming on axis bank okay bajaj auto hmm so taking support at 2000 psychological number but wouldn't be too excited about it right as bobby mentioned uh, the unseasonal rains 
and if there is uh, you know uh, uh, weakening of the rural economy then two wheeler sales in the tier two tier three cities are definitely going to come down but we're going to have to wait for that having said that uh, uh, i would say that almost all the indicators seem to be indicating some build up accumulation type activity happening in uh, bajaj auto there's been significant volume build up in the last two weeks even after uh, accounting for the expiry volume so well definitely not going to tell you to short it there could actually be a buying opportunity but that buying opportunity i think is a little premature uh, you might get a bounce and then it might come down again and then might be the time to buy right so uh 2000 on uh, bajaj auto okay just wait and watch or for those who want to try something i would say uh, okay don't do any trade but i would strongly recommend you track a long straddle on this uh track the 2000 call 2000 put long suppose you bought it on monday and then just track that as an exercise till expiry and you know track it every day i think you're going to definitely learn a lot on top of that if you want to have a more practical or a even better understanding i would make this even a um uh, 2000 long straddle and also look at let's say shorting the 2100 call and the 1900 put so that's a four leg strategy you can look at and see how that uh, pans out i think you'll definitely learn something there should be enough liquidity on bajaj auto to do that exercise So let's look at Hero while we are at it. Hero Motors, hmm, interesting. Actually formed a bounce. It's actually come down, and today it has uh, you can some support there, and there's very clearly you can see uh, strength in the MACD especially, and the weekly ones are not showing that strength, which would be you know happy place to buy. but nevertheless this is most interesting because uh, as we saw so many of the markets are weak and sectors are weak but uh, these two two wheeler companies are showing some strength so i'm wondering what's going on we got to do some more fundamental or sector analysis and see if we are missing something so it might not just be our you know agricultural problems but um, who knows maybe their exports are picking up or uh, um, we are coming out uh, the market is expanding maybe it's the urban market which is strong i i i don't know right so i would say no shorting no longing it either but uh, hero motor seems to be making a potential double bottom here though it's way too early to buy and uh, bajaj 2000 is forming a good potential base right so do that exercise and you could um, uh, maybe break your head on doing something similar on hero and see what are the option trades you could uh, look at right so while we are at it why don't we finish off the rest of the auto pack maruti so shown exceptional strength and 3700 and uh, 40 has become a clear double top today nice green candle uh, looks like uh, Uh, you know this is really not giving up any um, of its strength right now but i wouldn't again be uh, too much of a hurry to buy this as a matter of fact if it goes up to 3700 3725 might want to short it right so that's the view on maruti mnm okay so i mean i mean has clearly come off its life highs from 1400 to 1190 and uh, 
there. This is definitely, I think, a short, lot of uh, volatility in the volume, but it's going to be amazingly difficult for this to move beyond uh, 1250. You can see a huge amount of resistances uh, which are there, and it's interesting that uh, this support of 1180 was broken and then it recovered, actually came down again. Uh, and if things get bad, it will go to 1100 also. So that is uh, one thing to look out for in the M&M, &M, right? Okay. So you could use a bounce on M&M towards 1250 to go short on it with a nice stop loss at around 1263, 1268. Okay. Tata Motors. So falling 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 nothing in the indicators this time around I would say hmm, actually there is so 500 520 again uh, one of the lifetime high supports being tested being broken I would say difficult for it to go above 550 any bounce towards 550 should be used for shorting with a stop loss around 558 563 uh, once it comes down to 520 and breaks 510 then definitely 500 and most probably 480 so symmetrical triangle broken and the target has been met and more uh, a short term bounce looks possible that's when you should short it okay Okay. Uh, Bharti, wow, what a fall. So from that huge up move it made two weeks back from 350 to 400 on uh, that thing about uh, uh, the auction prices for the uh, what spectrum being low. Today it's just been thrashed. Some, something happened. And it's again, I wouldn't say small volumes. Uh, the volumes are very high. If anybody has any news or any information on Bharti as to why this might have been triggered, please share. I'm not aware of anything. But uh, huge amount of volatility. Uh, I would just say stay away from this and watch. It could take support at 360. Uh, but clearly once uh, it's, it's really a good buy only after it goes above 400, 405. I think the auctions are still going on if I'm right. Uh, it's supposed to be a pretty long affair, one month or something. So the final outcome is not yet known. BHEL, so capital goods down 200 day moving average broken, coming to a support zone that's also broken. And short this very good short at uh, stop loss at around 248, 250. I think it's more or less coming down to 205 that's uh, wow more than a 10% fall that you are looking at on BHEL and I see absolutely no bullishness in any of the indicators or anything right so yep excellent support uh, sorry resistance the stop loss at around 242 242 again all the prices are spot and you can Short it till 200, you're going to make a lot of money on BHL. I'm going to put it here again. BHL, alright, so. Question. Okay. Oh, so oil and gas as usual split between OMCs and our. Oh, Hold diggers, ONGC and O Oil India Limited and all. So this one is trying to break out, you know, I would say. And very interesting strength. So definitely no shorting oil marketing companies. As a matter of fact, uh, if you want to go long, then this is definitely one place to go long at. We've got a triple top sort of formation. And... Uh, 
even on the weekly charts still strength is there i would say so buy bpcl again not in any hurry that you should buy it and once it crosses 800 i think that's going to be the next move what you should actually do is create a long watch list to buy when the time comes and I, what I mean by that is when the market settles down or you've got some trigger to you know really take it up that's when these stocks will outperform on the way up EPCL is on the list Kane right so broke the support and down it goes so what's happening to crude oil I don't know I guess it's down that's why Kane is down yeah, interesting, but uh, definitely showing strength in indicators. So that's interesting. But 200 on Kane, another 7-8%, I think is where Kane is going to come to. Uh, and a very nice stop loss around 231, but that's quite high. So use any bounce to... Uh, short gain and probably ONGC also so let's look at ONGC while we are at it hmm very interesting so it's come to a uh, support line we had uh, put almost a year back or oh, two years back hmm so 304 300 rupees uh, you know what just go by the 300 put on this just go by the 300 put on uh, ONGC and forget about it. You might, uh, you could potentially make a lot of money if that 300 put, uh, if the market cracks and 300 goes down and any bounce even till 310, 320, you should buy even more of those 300 puts and uh, leave it. Alternatively, wait for it to break down and come to around 297 and then short it with a stop loss at around 303 with a, where is the next low where can we expect support it's almost three years back then okay uh, then We might go down to, uh, let's see, maybe 270, that's about 15% uh, lower, yeah, distinct possibility, but all this is going to be subject to two things in Kane and ONGC, it's the international crude oil prices and uh, uh, the rupee and the rupee has become weaker 92.60 today hmm. all right okay no just thoughtful because important support and if the support breaks it could be a big fall but on the other hand if this 800 holds this could also be a good place to buy so that's why I'm more in favor of buying the put given the downside uh, trend which is there rather than anything else okay all right so that's ONGC and if you missed gain next SIPLA hmm so one of the leaders in the pharma pack is beginning to show weakness old life being broken I think 670 is definitely on the cards mm, and absolutely no strength at all as a matter of fact I think the selling is going to get worse good shot 720 722 is a good stop loss first target 670 when 670 goes then you have the 100 day moving average around 655 and then after 6 that after that is 630 so somewhere down I 
we'll put supply i think we'll find some other better shots coal india ha see how supports and resistances in 3 days 370 to 345 that's a cool 10% gone and volumes are the only thing that are nothing but this is feb this feb volume or something was unusual volume and 340 and then 330 so i think the best opportunity was missed probably on wednesday and all i think it should probably go down to 340 but we'll just have to wait use any bounce to say 357 360 zones to actually get into a good shot with a stop loss then at 362 363 and all the way down to 340 dlf ha so yes 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 because of a really good opportunity please note 200 day moving average right there uptrend line right there 164 165 will be a very very good stop loss for a short and i think 145 140 is uh, on the cards any move all the way to 165 166 is to be used in my opinion for shorting and could easily go down to 145 140 and uh, okay yep that's dlf and i'll put that also of course it's not in the index anymore ha ah, dr reddy is a sipla dr reddy okay tentative and uh, probably not as good a shot as uh, some of the others that we've already found but i believe dr reddy is going to test 3225 yeah uh, soon it has sort of the extreme trend line here and once that trend line breaks is when i would short it i put put a stop a sltp short order at around 33 337 with a nice stop loss that time at around 3412 and the first target at 3225 gail hmm so gas authority of india some support happening at the 370 mark uh interesting and that support i think is becoming stronger you are getting a bullish divergence and let's go to weekly here so so far wherever i have switched to weekly uh because they have been showing some strength on the daily i have not seen strength on the weekly yet but that sometimes this takes you know it's a matter of time for it to show up on a larger time horizon this could be a good place to buy uh 370 i would not short gale and uh, it would be interesting to actually track it and i think uh, once the market settles down this would be a good one so i'll put gale on this list Okay, not in any order. Then gold. What happened to gold? Wow! Look at that. The breakdown finally happened. Gone. What volatility today? High two thousand four fifty. Low two thousand two eighty. What very bad volumes. with some 10000 is it's not bad so gold has decisively at least broken this support level of 2396 i will looking at 22 i will looking at 2000 on gold in the weeks to come that will be interesting grasim so came back to its 2008 peak sort of formed a big double top triple top thing but has just been broken down after that beaten down after that and that will definitely test 2490 and uh, well no reason to believe that it could go up but definitely this is something to 
track and once 3500 breaks 3300 and that will be an interesting level to watch right so i would say watch it but it can be shorted Nice stop loss at around 3631 and it's actually a good shot only once below 3500. Once that happens, it could very quickly fall by 200 rupees or 8%. Let's see I'll take. So, I was doing a life high, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. So, the split happened and everything has changed. So clearly, that's a good support and once that support breaks, then definitely much lower levels. So it will be good to watch this nice stop loss, 1000 rupees psychological mark which is there. Just leave that and uh, any bounce towards 1000 again if that happens use that to short once 950 breaks then big fall to 900 and please notice we have a unclosed window here okay so if in order for that to close we all know what needs to happen the market needs to come to about 840 so if anybody has the courage, I would say short this uh, anywhere close to 1000 or by the 950 put or the 1000 put uh, and just have the courage to hold on to this. Who knows, this could easily become a multi-bagger short for you in this month, April. So let's see tech. Uh, window closing we're talking about 15% uh, fall almost that's a big fall right the only thing against any of these IT companies will be the strengthening rupee so that's one thing to know so HDFC really that's also you know one of our blue chips bluest of the blue chips it also starts falling then well not much more evidence to know how bad the market is 1250 1300 very good support uh, sorry 1300 plus 1310 very good stop loss for a short once 1250 breaks then 1228 even 1200 is on the cards it's DFC bank done sideways move easily broken down hint of that was already there when the market did not go back to that green line and went and produced this lower low in the consolidation right and once thousand breaks I would definitely say buy the thousand put for this right CFC bank buy thousand put right it could easily fall to 960 and once that happens then even 930 is distinctly possible right yeah or any bounce to 1040 should be used for going short on that in Dalco so taking support at a very very critical multi-year level of almost uh, from 2004 14 11 years back so I am really good to do a fundamental review of these stocks and then uh, you know decide what we want to do. Uh, otherwise, just hold on and keep watching. Any move to about 140 should be used for uh, you know going short.
Do wait and watch. Any move to 140, short it with uh, a stop loss of 142, 143. On the other hand, if it breaks 128, you can see that that's going to be a massive break, all right? If one for, uh, one, it, it's it's little tough because uh, playing this one because you're talking about 11-year, multi-year support. Uh, some people are going to view it as a great place to buy. Some people are going to say if that breaks, then wow, what the hell? Uh, so really depends. So that's where I think a fundamental view would definitely help if anybody wants to get onto that um, because there's a pot potential that if it breaks this, if it breaks 125, then you could go down to 110. That's almost eight nine percent. But on the other hand, if this is a good support, then you know once the market recovers, then 150 is going to become a really good possibility. So that alternatively. This is where something like the 130 long straddle will be a good thing. Buy the 130 call and the 130 put, and then um, you know just uh, see where that goes. Okay. So we saw the FMCG index crack very badly, and well, you have the Hindustan Unilever here really, really coming down. But that downtrend was already there from last week, if you remember. Nothing new. It's just accelerated. And once this support broke, as you saw, 885 sat there for three weeks in mid-February, sat here for two days last week. And then once that broke, then, you know, way down, we are going down to 828 for sure. That's another 25 rupees. And I suspect uh, the fall is going to go to at least 800 rupees. So this is, I think, another good shot that we have. ICICA Bank. See how coming to support, breaking down, and after again breakdown of a trend line, how it quickly tends to fall. So that's that's the thing about shorting. You've got to be on the ball. You've got to track it quickly. You've got to be able to identify the breakdowns quickly, or put limit orders to take advantage of uh, the breakdowns. You need to execute quickly, and then uh, uh, you know make sure that you don't miss out on the opportunities. So. Yeah, you can see that, you know, it's probably going to come back down to at least its old life high, I would think. Mm. Somewhere around uh, 280 is where good support is. That's a good 30 rupees down from where it is right now. Yep, I, I, it, it's most probably coming down to 280. So here's another one. CICI Bank. IDFC. Well, I'm not going to play any games with IDFC. Like I've said, just make it your SIP portfolio and keep buying. Don't uh, miss out on the demerger that will happen. See how it came to 160. Very good volumes. If you ignore this, last three weeks it's gone up now on higher volumes. And um, well, if it goes down, it goes down, but good opportunity to buy and then see if 175 can happen. Just do an SIP. Indusin Bank, definitely one of the leaders in technically on the banking side that also broke. Showing strength, there's no doubt about it, so let's just stay away. No, no shorting, no longing of this either. Uh, but as of now, that looks like the tentative downtrend line and we'll have to watch that. In fee, so breakdown of trend line and test of that breakdown today. Uh, so all happening on high volumes, seems to be some strength happening in the indicators. Okay. Watch if I in fee comes to around that level. Twenty two fifty. Okay. So if if in fee comes to twenty two fifty, that probably be a very good time to short it with a stop loss of twenty two seventy six. And then it will probably break down again 
from 28 to 80, 21, 20, and then fall to 2050, maybe even to 2000. On the weekly charts, okay, you can see that. Uh, Hmm. Doji, Doji, red candle, red candle spinning top sort or hammer. This has taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks, two months to form, and it could just take a few weeks to come to two thousand. Uh, alternatively, there is another suggestion: buy the twenty-two fifty put. It's a slightly out of the money, but that'll be there in the money put. Okay, so. You can buy that or buy the 2150 put or even the 2100 put and just sit tight. Right. Uh, I'll put it here. Not a strong one, but still can be. ITC. Hmm. ITC. Oops, sorry. Absolutely no doubts about a few things like nice double top. Uh, this was your sugar thing sorry what am I saying um, excise duty increase on cigarettes normally it recovers this time it's not the weakness in the market is just compounded that 340 broke and 340 broke it's come to 310 and I it's not come to 310 but 310 is definitely definitely on the cards it should be reevaluated at that point because 310 as you can see is a two-year support zone and the stock might find support there. So from 400 to 310, that's almost uh, what 20% fall. Valuations might have become a lot more attractive. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So no aggressive shots, I would say. If it comes to 330, then short it with a stop loss at around 335. I am quite sure it's coming to 310 first and then after that we shall review. The question is if 310 breaks then does it go down to 275 but before that around 293-300. Jindal Steel and Power so we'll probably not be looking at it from next week since it's out of the Nifty, move to the Nifty Junior so unless we start tracking Nifty Junior. so. A lot of uh, event-based uh, activity happening on. So this was when it won the mines uh, auction. This is the fall when the government is saying we are going to reject the auction. And then uh, it's, it's going to be a very risky one. Uh, they went to court, as you know, and then they got a stay order or a review, something like that. So till that whole thing pans out, you're going to have significant event risk on this. So because of that, just stay away. Anyway, any trade that you do on this is probably um, just going to be, you're just going to be either very lucky or either way, or very unlucky, uh, depending on how the events pan out. So do you want to do trades like that? I would say no. Kotak Bank, okay, so that's also broken a trend line and it is at its low Li-Fi. And if Kotak Bank breaks that, then more or less quite sure it's coming to 1150. Given what's happening on the banking, Bank Nifty and all the other ones and the nice, you can see uh, double top on uh, uh, Kotak, then uh, I would say it's a pretty decent shot. Uh, slightly high risk because uh, it's 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 a bank that tends to be I think bought a lot, but with this double top, then the trend line being where it is, you've got two trades that you can look at. One is any bounce towards thirteen forty, short it with a very very nice stop loss at around thirteen seventy four, or the breakdown of this. And if that happens of 1266, then I think very quickly at least till 1200 and then even 1150. So put a SLTP sell order at 1256 
with a stop loss of 1289, 1200 and then 1150 would be your next target. I'm going to put that up. LNT. So, hmm, uh, some buying interest today. LNT, a lot of plays happening on LNT. One is of course the defense, the other one is the demergers, the restructuring. Uh, so from a fundamental point of view, I think it would be good to you know, buy LNT as much as uh, one can. Uh, Not to be shorted. Seventeen hundred is a good uh, resistance. Maybe even seventeen fifty. Uh, watch for this. What happens at sixteen hundred, and then uh, we'll decide uh, what we want to do with it. Right? Okay. Hmm. Lupin, so making a life I went to 2000 and I settled back from there. Okay, so definitely right now technically the stock is showing tremendous strength in the pharma space and there is no compulsion to short this at all, but I would just say that uh, that could happen anytime. You've got an RSI, not a bearish divergence yet, but I would not be surprised if there's some amount of some smart selling happening at higher levels, just my conjecture at this point. Uh, what I would do is put a sell order at around 1890 and if 1900 breaks go short with a stop loss of 1936, for the first target of 1750. An MDC sitting at a very good support of 125 and once that breaks then uh, much lower levels. Wow, might almost go back to its close to its life flow for all you know. Back to 108 from 125 Okay, so we'll just wait and watch, stop loss. Okay, I think we've got better stocks to do, so we'll leave this. NTPC, hmm. So, again, at a multi-year support, we can see that again, this from 2006, almost uh, 10 years, 9, 10 years. Hmm. Okay, dicey one. It could be a good buy above 150 or a good shot if it goes below 142. Hmm. Too much volatility for comfort. This one either sleeps for long periods of time or suddenly jumps around. In short periods of time, very difficult to take a call on such. ONGC we discussed, PNB, hmm. so notice how again one of the earlier supports took support 158 and finally when it broke here and then it went down to the next level of 142 and how it has taken support on that and well we need to put a lower support now obviously because that has clearly been mm, tested today and there is no sign of strength generally in the banking space. So where could the lower support be? I would say somewhere there. And that's pretty far off. We can definitely have one more in that zone of 130. So it's at 146. 130 is the next. Yeah, 130. 120, 113, 
just looking for a resistance to keep in mind when the market does bounce so that we are on 170 any move up towards 158 160 especially on low volume should be used to abundantly short power grid aha so that's also just broken the trend line yesterday today a test let's see how the volumes are okay nothing substantial and no strength in the indices I would say this is a good shot 147 stop loss 140 138 is the next target on power grid Reliance ooh, falling on volumes now clearly today's increase in volume any bounce up to 1846 should be used to short and once Reliance breaks uh, 800 then clearly I think 777 and even 760 is a distinct possibility. State Bank of India I wonder what they're going to do about the uh, um, um, rights issue that they were thinking about 10 billion dollar issue now that the market is like you know corrected a lot almost from say 330 levels to 280 levels so the government is going to get a lot less money but on the other hand you know if you think about it the government will have to pay less for subscribing for its share so it's a double-edged sword that we have here on SBI uh, so it will cost less for the government to subscribe but on the other hand it will raise less also from the public so given the financial situation which of the two roads does uh, uh, the government decide it will be interesting to watch so today support jump okay nothing to get uh, very happy about around uh, 270 would be a good shot they're just four or five rupees higher than this or alternatively let it break out below 250 or what I would say is buy the SBI put for 250 let me put that SBI buy 250 put alright higher it goes keep buying some more I would say that you're looking at at least uh, 236. Yep, 236 on the stock, and then uh, we'll review after that. So 14 rupees. Yeah, any bounce I would say by the 250 or then even the 270 put if it goes even higher. SSLT. So that's just you know hanging around there and waiting to collapse to 174 and that's not really a collapse but after 174 breaks then all hell breaks loose 170 150 who knows what Sun Pharma so hmm tweezer stop unable to move above that you've got clearly divergence on the RSI, you've got strong divergence on the um, stochastic MACD negative crossover this is definitely looking like a good shot to me All right. so it was one of the leaders of the market for a long time and now yep I would put it in a strong shot Sun Pharma what could we buy 1000 put or 1050 put also or you could short it with a nice stop loss of around 1057 950 first target and then 920 is the next target 950 920 Tata power oh big fall big fall big fall all right. All right.
Hmm. Headed to 68 in my opinion. Absolutely no strength in this. At least some of the other ones had some green candles and all but this is looking pretty bleak. I'm not sure if the coal auction has anything to do with this sort of uh, really strong bearishness. Uh, Well, really good support is only at this level of 68 and I think it's going to head there. In short, with the stop loss around 77, it's at 74, 90, 75 or just wait for this to break which looks like it's going to do that. SLTP short order at 73.30, stop loss at 76.30, wait for 69 at least, right? And then if 68 breaks, then we'll see much, much lower levels. Okay. Tata Steel. So this is your falling wedge that we saw, but it did not break out. As a matter of fact, seems to, you know, complete, completely useless at this point. This is the next outer level we can look at and see if it take support there is some strength that is definitely there right so you can see that the you know divergence is actually not worked out at this point as a matter of fact in a sense the indicator has corrected in line with the price almost always it's the other way around and uh, it's interesting to see if well there's nothing substantially increase in volume um, I'm going to put uh, Dalco Tata Steel here, but these are all, let's just put them as queries because they are all either showing multi-year supports or chances of uh, a base formation given on either pattern or a good uh, divergence, right. Again, this has come to a multi-year support of 2004, just like in Dalco. So, wait and watch and the falling wedge I think is just there again, we we'll just have to see how this goes. So, no shorting could be a good buy. TCS, right, so it's come to 2500, psychological mark and then you've got this uh, level here. And I think 2400 breaks and 2300. Wow, yeah, that's a important life uh, uh, high support. I would say uh, any bounce or just go by the 2500 put on TCS. It's uh, very, very delicately poised. It could give you a lot of money very quickly because you have the 200 day moving average, you've got the downtrend line. And if that breaks, then easily 2400 is quickly happening. I'll put TCS by 2500 put. Okay. Tech Mahindra. Ah. Hmm. We'll have to completely do the studies again. Uh, that's because the split happened. You can see how you know this support was broken uh, of 690, how it swiftly fell, it's at 7, 845, so, so this is where some support is, it's almost close to that at 630, and I think the test will be what will happen at around 600, once 600 breaks then uh, I think we can definitely expect lower levels on that all the way to probably 540. Wow, that's uh, quite a bit, 10% fall. 
that could happen on Tech Mahindra. That will be a big correction from where it was. So watch out for that. Could take a bit of time for it to pan out because of potentially strengthening rupee and all. But that is a distinct possibility. You may want to look at buying the 630 or closest uh, put on this. And any bounce to 680, excellent uh, shot with a stop loss at around 696. And uh, yeah, the 200 day moving average will be the short term support, I think. 600 will be a short term support and then a fall to lower levels. Wipro, whoa, see what happened today. Big fall on Wipro today after going around for some time. Uh, at 6.50 and then Thursday big fall, today big fall. Any idea, anybody? Any news on Wipro? Um, I'm probably missing it if there is anything. 600 is definitely the next target and you still have an unopened window here. So you're looking at Jan, it's two months, two and a half months that it's taking to come back and test it. So lesson for us as to how long it might take. Where was the window that we talked about earlier? Um, PHEL, HCL Tech, right? So let this be a lesson. Look at Wipro and get a sense of how long, how many weeks and months these things take to pan out before you um, get the result or the expectation that you're working on. You know the window happens, you forget about it unless you mark it to remind you. And then you just think it's going up, nice life highs, and then the window is forgotten after some time. And then suddenly this move happens, don't take it seriously, and then in two days it's from 660 to 610. That's a you know, 8% fall in two days or like three days. And suddenly people are like wondering what's going on, volumes are picked up, and now you're thinking about um, sort of going short on it, but already gone down 10%, MACD crossover, RSI, all the things were building up. So those of you who know, I'm just trying to give you a sense. Again, I think going back to last week's IMR about how, uh, getting a sense of how things take to pan out and being aware of that and being patient about it can, you know, play a big part in uh, uh, both managing your investments and managing your trades. Z Limited, okay, so taking support on the 200 day moving average as of now. Absolutely no reason to think about uh, why it should bounce. It's a sort of double bottom here. I would say any bounce till about 345 should be used to short. And I would say the next target is 315 on the stock. And once that breaks, I think the really significant support is only at 300. Could take a month or two to come there. But actually think about it, just another 10% fall. Right. Yep, so that is Z. Uh, let's look at the, so that's it on the old list. I just want to look at uh, the stocks that have been moved into the Nifty and uh, which one were those? Uh, yes, Bank and Idea, right? Uh, all right, so let's look at that. So Idea was at a life high. Yesterday or day before, clear double top there and uh, well, surprising that uh, so Bharti also fell big time today, idea also fell big time today. So in spite of this being moved to the index and you know the ETF guys and the index guys are having to um, adjust their portfolios, it's still gone down from about 180 to 170, not a small fall and on reasonably high volume, actually very high volume. I wouldn't take the expiry volume into account, words of doing an MACD crossover. There is definitely some sector news I think on uh, telecom that I'm missing out on and it's surprising because uh, this has gone down to nice double top. So 190 is going to be a very very significant uh, level for idea. Uh, risk is definitely there but I think uh, 160, 155 is where idea is heading down to. And then Yes Bank, 
so again double top 900 if 750 breaks then uh, 675 okay 750 breaks and 675 is where uh, we are clearly clearly heading down to on yes bank there is no strength in the indicators either right so yep that okay so that's with uh, all the charts are there any questions any requests all right so Madhu asked for Ashok Leland and Madhusan Sumi. So you can see on Ashok Leland, clearly a top at 75. It's, you can see more in the moving averages how that rounding formation is happening. right? So I think it's clearer there. But very interesting that the volumes have you know really dried up, relatively speaking. Okay, maybe dried up is too strong a word, but they are coming down on lower volumes. Uh, it has tested its old important support at 68. But I think given the overall market conditions, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a very tricky one. Uh, as you saw in the other auto stocks that we discussed, there's some sort of base formation that's going on. I would not expect any of these stocks to be running up in a very quick fashion. As a matter of fact, I would say if there's a move suddenly to 75, for example, then use that to exit and or at least lighten your portfolio. It's tough to recommend selling it at this point because there's that strength. But you know what? The trend line has been broken. And this trend line is from March 2014. I would say put a stop loss for any positions you have below 65, say 64. That's uh, 5 rupees. That's almost 8% lower from where it is right now. And then exit. So it's, it's a tough call because uh, the overall market and almost all the sectors are really weak as you already saw. But there are some stocks and maybe the auto sector which could be forming a base. Given that we are expecting, or at least I am expecting, uh, say even 7700 now on the index, uh, it's very difficult to, I mean, you, the stock has to be extremely strong, the business has to be extremely strong, that when the overall markets is going to fall by maybe another 8, 9, 10 percent, that individual stocks like this are going to still be able to keep their head up. Right? So I think from a multi-week perspective I would really go light on all my long portfolios no matter how unless they're exceptionally strong so I don't think Ashok Leland is amongst that uh, so I would uh, exit and uh, wait for lower prices to perhaps uh, re-enter that so one thing to notice is the breakdown of the trend line the attempt to move back up could go back to 75 but then I think beyond that it, it's it's tough and if you look at the upper Bollinger band that's also turned down okay uh, just putting it on weekly so on the weekly one thing for you for you to notice Madhu is that the MACD might be doing a crossover here in the next week or two if that happens then that's definitely you know not good news and uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay there's one more thing here to highlight good example actually uh, this is a divergence that is there on the stochastic. It's a negative divergence and uh, sorry not on stochastic on the RSI and the RSI tends to be more a leading indicator and the MACD here tends to be more a lagging indicator. So the RSI is showing some weakness and hinting of possible down moves which the MACD will actually show only later. So I think uh, this is probably a really good time to probably go light holding on to it will have risks right uh, one thing I uh, yeah one thing you could do uh, I'm not uh, sure how many stocks you have any of that's confidential if you have stocks in quantity that are worth the lot size okay then what I would say is hold on to them hold on to your underlying portfolio and sell the 75 call all right, that way you lock in the 75 price as a sort of uh, guarantee because even if the market goes up above 75, the loss you make on the 75 call will be compensated for by your underlying portfolio. So 75 becomes your top price. 
right? Uh, okay. Okay. That that's one way of looking at it, combining a spot portfolio with options in terms of okay. trying to extract an extra return when the markets are weak while not giving up on your underlying portfolio, right? Uh, okay. So that's okay. one thing. But if you don't want to get into anything. A little software is that complicated because follow up. Actually, follow up is not required if the quantities match, right? They may not exactly match, but uh, if they are close by. Then you, that's something you can uh, think about, right? And maybe we can discuss it more in detail tomorrow offline or something like that, right? In terms of if you want to do that, that sort of a derivative uh, price lock-in strategy. Otherwise, I think it, if you just want to keep things simple, I would say. If it bounces, even 50 paisa, one rupee, two rupees, uh, start liquidating, like start going light. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I'm saying this with, to be very clear, uh, from the perspective that the expectation is that the overall market has a eight, ten percent correction coming up, and yeah. uh, if that happens, then individual stocks will also bear the brunt, no matter how strong they are. Yeah. Okay. So coming to Madhusan. All right, so very interesting, very critically poised at the trend line, as you can see, 550 has come to 472, and that's a trend line for about uh, six, seven months. You can see how the up move has become weaker now, and what I mean by that is, uh, first it was going at that angle, now it's going at slightly lower angle, and that trend line is uh, being threatened. Uh, Volume is nothing great, and oh, this is interesting. That uh, it, it still got tremendous strength. Uh, as a matter of fact, the MACD might even cross up, and then. But you know, again, given the overall market, and that's where I would uh, sort of my preference to be. And 500 is an important psychological mark. If you remember, we kept talking about that in the yeah. IMRs. Um, yeah. 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 I think again, if you're making some good profit on this, it's better to start liquidating. Uh, the company itself, I think, has still a lot of prospects, but given the overall market condition, um, I, I would just think it's wise to lock in some profit. You could hold on to some. I would definitely say one thing, in case you plan to hold on, if it breaks 335, then definitely sell the entire lot, whatever you have. Okay, okay I think that should be a hard sell number. Uh, nothing. You should not hold it if it breaks below 425. Right? Okay. Those that that would be my view. Uh, automotive axles, Bobby A A L is auto axles. See, given the overall market deteriorating condition, so it's it's always important to keep that in mind. Uh, it's deteriorated a lot more than it was uh, just a week back. But this one is definitely interesting. As usual, Bobby comes up with something that is different. Uh, this has actually made a new Li-Fi, looks like. All right. So definitely on to something. Look at the big move today. That is the old Li-Fi closing price basis. And it looks like it's gunning for that. And in the last uh, one week, this whole week rather, you've got some strong green candles. Uh, volume is erratic, no doubt about that, as you can see, so it will be a little tough to read into that. But if we squeeze into the volume over the last, uh, let's say, three months, you can clearly see it's been bought on good volumes and uh, good chance is going to head to 8.30. So good, I mean, I'm glad we saw this. Thanks for this, Bobby, uh, because earlier I mentioned that, you know, you're, you're always going to find some stocks which will do well even in a bad market, this is clearly one of those stocks, good volumes and all. Uh, having said that, if the market weakens, then you'll have to have really strong reasons that for this market to go up is either do some, I mean, if you have some in-depth research, recent activities, some big orders, restructuring, new management, or something that compels, uh, you know, has a compelling reason, then I would say even buy this uh, on Monday. But if not, then I would probably put this first on the list of this one, right? So we were looking at that auto motive axles, right? Right, definite buy when the time comes, right? So you want to nibble on it on one day? Yes, but 
you could build a strong position on it after the market has stabilized. The thing is, it's very tricky. Uh, you could see this continue to rise, maybe 10, 20, 30, 50 bucks, and the market continues to go down. And then we are, we are expecting the market to, you know, at some point it will base out. But in the meantime, this one, the automotive has gone up, you know, who knows, 5, 6, 7 percent. When we are hoping for a correction, that doesn't happen. And then after the market bases out and forms a good support, this will suddenly shoot away to, you know, another 10, 20, 20 percent. So this is when you'll have to decide as a strategy, something we'll discuss a lot more in detail in tomorrow's uh, portfolio construction session about uh, what sort of approach do you want. So if you're taking a very stock specific approach, a uh, step by step approach, then yes, you could buy automotive axles with the stop loss. If you're going to take a market wide approach on your portfolio or you're going to somehow split this view amongst your portfolio, then that's where the challenge comes in managing two conflicting views, one bearish on the market, one bullish on an individual stock. So uh, one has to take those calls there is no easy way out. It, it doesn't become easier than this actually. Uh, if it sounds easy, I'm sorry. But that's it. Yeah, so I would definitely put this on my watch list and it looks like it has a lot more potential to go up uh, in some you know more long term basis because uh, it's just breaking out from its 2005 peak. That's like massive. So if the market was, when I say market I'm referring to the nifty. Uh, if the market was even flat or not showing the weakness that it was, I would have said just jump into this on Monday, right? But it is not and breaking a 10 year high, it actually has done that, right? Is massively good news um, and this is a stock that could go substantially higher, maybe even 1500 to 2000 rupees in a year or two. But is it the right time to buy? That That is the moot question uh, given the overall weakness in the market. Uh, there is an alternative which is uh, just keep buying this uh, without having a stop loss for the next six months, one year and that's a crazy thing to say uh, but 11 year breakout is very, 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 very significant. Right? So yeah, um, one more gem from Bobby. Uh, so all of us uh, better you know, hang on to it. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay, great. So we'll stop here for tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, just to remind everyone that uh, 